Hey guys, in this video I'll go over engine management for the Viper. You can control the engine power with the throttle. This is the RPM gauge. When you push your throttle forward, the RPM will go up. There are also some other gauges here. This gauge is for the oil pressure. There's also the nozzle position. This gauge that says FTIT shows the engine temperature. Here's the fuel flow gauge. This shows how much fuel your engine is using in pounds per hour. Here are the hydraulic gauges. And here is the EPU fuel gauge, which I'll talk about later. Let's go over the engine controls now. They're right here next to the throttle. First is this switch. If you lift up the cover, by default it's on primary mode, but you can put it into secondary mode. Secondary mode is basically a backup engine mode. You don't need to manually put it in secondary. If the engine has any problems, it'll automatically go into secondary mode. Also keep in mind that in secondary mode you cannot use afterburner. I'd recommend just leaving it in primary. This switch doesn't do anything, and the max power switch doesn't do anything either. Next there is the EPU panel. The EPU is something inside the F-16 that can power your electrical systems and hydraulic systems in case the generators fail or the engine fails. You can use this switch to manually turn it on or off, but I would recommend leaving it in the normal position so that it will automatically turn on when necessary. When the EPU turns on, you'll see this green light right here, and this light will come on too. The EPU can be powered with two things. It can be powered with bleed air from the engine or with hydrazine. If it's powered with bleed air, you'll see the air light on the bottom, and if it's powered with hydrazine, you'll see the hydrazine light on top. If the EPU is being powered with hydrazine, then this gauge here will go down. The hydrazine in the plane lasts for about 10 minutes, so if you have an engine failure, the EPU will allow you to control the plane so you can glide it. Another engine control is the engine anti-ice switch. I'd recommend leaving it to auto, but you can also turn it off or on. Next thing to talk about is the afterburner. There is a notch right here, and if the throttle goes past that notch, it will be lifted up and it will turn on the afterburner. The afterburner gives the plane a lot of thrust. However, it also drains down the fuel really quickly, so I would recommend only using it when necessary. Now I'll go over some warning lights for the engine system. The engine fire light obviously tells you when the engine has a fire. The engine light comes on if the engine has a flame out, over temp, or stagnation. There's also a warning light for low hydraulic or oil pressure. There are also some engine lights down here. The engine fault light just means there's some kind of failure with the engine. The sec light turns on when the engine is in secondary mode. And the inlet ice light turns on when the engine has detected icing. Lastly, I'll go over how to restart the engine in the air. There are two ways you can restart it. The first method is a windmill restart. The first thing you need to do is hold right shift and click end to put the throttle into the off position. Then you need to point the nose down to get some air speed, and you need to get at least 20% RPM. Once you have 20% RPM, you can use right shift and home to put the throttle into the idle position. After that, your RPM should go up, and once it hits around 60%, the generators should come back online, and you can push your throttle forward. The next method to restart the engine is with the JFS switch. Put the throttle into the off position. Put the starter into position 2. Wait for the RPM to get to 20%. Once it reaches 20%, put the throttle into the idle position, and then the RPM should go up. That was engine management in the Viper. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you later.